up my heart ain't strong enough
All right. Hello. I'm Aisha Jaffer, weekday host on The Current, and I'm here with Dead. Thanks for being here, guys. Hello. What's up? Oh, my goodness. It's so exciting. You guys have been on tour quite a lot, as we were just talking about before. You just finished your UK and European tour, and now this is the first date for this run of the North American tour. How has it felt so far? <laughs> Honestly, so good. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we both went for a run separately today. We're keeping it, uh, keeping it healthy. On this is our healthy leg. Oh my gosh! Well, like that's amazing. That's yeah. like you guys are fresh and ready to go, and this is the perfect town to start it off with. Yeah, mm-hmm. the music fans are are ready for it, and <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm new to Minneapolis, so I've seen they're hungry for music, and I know you guys are going to bring that energy. Uh, well, before all these tours, though, I have to ask about because I love this so much. You guys rented a truck. And you went to parking lots around Chicago and played some shows. What ignited that idea and how were those shows? Um, well, partly it was just because it was like the pandemic and like everything was closed. And I think the idea of a generator show has always been something we're interested in. And then I was like, oh, we could just put in a truck and then make it like a caravan kind of thing where we just like drop locations and show up. So then uh, we did that and it was really crazy. And that was the first time we had played since our last record had come out. So we like... I don't know, didn't know if anyone would come. And then when we opened the door, there was like all these people there. Yeah. And we're like, oh, Chicago's here. Like it was really uh, affirming, I think, and exciting. And we actually just did it in England also. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, my also goodness. Also affirming and exciting. Because mm-hmm. we were like, we don't know what the English, even know what a generator show is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like where we were. I'm sure they do. But it was like posh festival, you know. That feeling, though, the reveal of like lifting up. Yeah, I'm that's like, oh, awesome. God, it's a surprise for both of us, you know? yeah, like for sick. the audience and the band. Yeah, it's a very, uh, yeah, and it was like, are the cops going to come? I was like, I guess we can just drive away. Like, we were like thinking about all this stuff, and like, I was like, it was kind of COVID. Like no we were like, it's probably era. fine. Yeah. Anyways, like the like, cops, cops drove by drove one time. By and like, and, like, oh. gave a thumbs up. We were like, this is so <laughs> weird. Like, where are we? They were like, one time it was plan. raining. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. And everyone was just like jumping and like we were jumping and the truck was moving around. It was just like, this is epic. <laughs> this is an epic way to exit this terrible era, era of like sitting inside. Yeah. And being wa- randomly sad. <laughs> yeah. Well, mobile show too. That's like the perfect way to go. Because yeah. You get to kind of choose your own adventure. Totally. Yeah. Well, you guys have a new album out. It's called Blue Skies. Uh, and when I think of Blue Skies, for me, thematically, I think of this phrase where people talk about how, oh, the sky looks gray. It's because there's clouds in the sky, but really the sky is blue. The clouds are just rolling through. And that's what I think of when mm. I think of Blue Skies. But what is your hopeful takeaway from the album? I mean, I think you I kind mean, of nailed that, it yeah, with, like, it. hopeful. It's, like, <laughs> it's kind of just, like, optimism on the horizon. Like, uh, that's how I kind of look at the blue sky as, like, as, like, just a little bit ahead. Yeah. my Yeah, it's sort of like uh, this too shall pass applies to bad things and good things. To I use blanket that. statements that aren't real. But, you know, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like this too shall pass. Uh, and, there, you know, another blue sky is coming and there, there is always actually a blue sky somewhere. Um, but, yeah, because it just was a dark time, you know. Mm-hmm. It was like, whether it's dark time pandemic, dark time, like, the riots and the protesting, dark time, like, just basic Chicago Internally. winter. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, I mean, here souls. it's the same thing in Minnesota. It's like dark, gray, snowy winter. <laughs> And then there's that day where the blue sky hits and you're like, oh my God, it's about to be summer. And everybody knows that feeling in the Midwest. Like, (gasps) and then everyone goes outside at once in this like mass mosh. And it's like that feeling yeah, of like, we just survived and now we're going to party. And you're there waiting with the truck, so. And we're there (laughs) waiting with the truck. (laughs) Exactly. I love that. Well, you had, you know, your prior album, Flowers of Devotion, that kind of, that like was a breakthrough. It like got you some resources. You ended up signing to Fat Possum Records. And what I really love is for this new album, instead of just like going to like the big studio or being like, what's up, Max Martin or whatever, Mm -hmm. um, you guys decided to invest inwards and in your own process. And I'm just curious of why you decided that. And then like, has anything been a little bit different about this process of making this new record? I think like at the core, we're like still like a DIY band and like we've Mm -hmm. been to Minneapolis so many times and played so many basements here. Like, and that's just like forever in our blood. And I think it was like also a vote of confidence in ourselves of just being like the reason why this is like coming is because of the thing that we're like already doing. So like why change it and bring in this like person that we're like 
objectively are supposed to, I guess, yeah. you know? But so it was kind of just like, yeah, like doubling down and like trying to do the thing that we do and just keep getting better at it. Yeah, we just like sp- and like allowed ourselves more time to do what we do well. Mm-hmm. Uh and just almost like I like like do everything just as an experiment like well what is this like you know uh cuz you don't really need much to do anything creatively i think mm-hmm. yeah and our band has like kind of our fingerprints over all like aspects of it and i think that is like kind of something that gives it shape and also maybe like the messy finger paint vibe that we sometimes <laughs> But like next record, we're thinking not to like yeah no already go to the next blue sky future. Please but, do it. <laughs> um, it's like we're excited to like maybe invite a producer, but like a friend, yeah, who we like feel really close with, who gets the scrappy vibe, but also has like a bit of shine we might not have thought about, obviously. So it's just like we're very careful with how we expand. Yeah, keep like, it in the family. We just keep mm-hmm. it kind of grounded. Can't I like explode that. Explode too fast. No diss to you, Max, but like I'm into this. So. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, you know, people like are always making stuff, and like, why should like the old like not that these people are old, but like why should like the old heads be like the only ones like making cool records? I guess. Yeah, I agree. And I yeah, think there's that's new why. heads coming up. There's new heads, and there's people powered, right? So mm-hmm. you kind of get to decide. Yeah. And people are deciding what they love, and totally. I think that's an awesome turn. We don't like to follow too much. Yeah. Well, I'm glad because <laughs> I'm loving the music. And in fact, we're playing Bad Love and it's our song of the day today, uh, which is awesome. And I love that song because it's so relatable. Everybody can relate to Bad Love. You know, you're kind of trying to own your faults, but also trying to run away from, you know, the bad love. Look for self-love. Look for a better love, right? Hell we're chasing yeah. that. So I was curious if that kind of lesson in that song came to you like during the time of like forced reflection or or what kind of lit bad love uh yeah i guess not really in the forced reflection i'm always forcing reflection upon myself okay. but i'm <laughs> the exception to the rule to quote the movie we watched last night <laughs> he's just not that into you with Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it kind, of yeah, it kind of applies to the song. It kind of applies to the song, honestly. I was like, oh, this movie's about bad love. It's like, <laughs> kind of. It's a roller coaster. It's of a roller coaster movie. We're only going to watch one hour and we ended up watching all two hours. And um, anyway, so watch that movie and then you'll understand bad love. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I just, one year was like, what am I doing dating crumbs? And also, like, you know, reflecting on how I've been a crumb as well so it's not just like finger pointing it's like what can we do about this and then I just spend a lot of time alone and become my own best friend and my own partner and my own like you know my own dog and then from that place I was like now how can I be in relation with people whether it's friends bandmates romantic partners and that's what I'm referencing about the new love but for me it definitely starts with like and it's like, you know, a lot of these words are thrown around like self-love, but it's like, that's real shit. Like, yeah. you can't, sorry. Are you allowed to cuss on the Minnesota radio? Probably I mean, not. it's got the best beep ever, so <laughs> I kind of love it, so. <laughs> Any hoozle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's not live. <laughs> it's cool, and I wanted to talk about it because uh, everybody can, yeah, everyone can relate to it. Yeah. And it's a simple song, simple words, but the meaning can go deep state. Yeah. Well, then stars kind of feeds into it, right? Because <laughs> stars is like talking about the support and what you do to kind of get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's kind of, yeah, like, I guess, yeah, like the same, like kind of uh, getting right with yourself so you can like handle the world, I guess, you know? Yeah. Well, and I like the, you know, talking about taking a walk and kind of like being able to do something for yourself for reflection and to get there. Is there a specific walk that you like to take i was always walking through like chicago's got really good alleys so it's always like walking through the alleys like, i like to it's like nice to get in motion and then you're like mind starts working like riding my bikes the same way like yeah you're, like in this like repetitive physical act but it's like doesn't require anything of you you know yeah yeah so i just Except stomp around some alleys and kick some garbage cans you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then some raccoons roll out. Like, that's yeah. that's the jam. Like, r- raccoon-sized rats. Oh, my God. 
much. <laughs> That's the real. <laughs> I believe that. I've actually, I remember being on the phone and like this football size rat like knocked me over. My phone was like, what was that? And I was like, just a rat. Oh just my gosh. <laughs> One time I seen a rat dancing it like in a rainstorm in a puddle. With another rat. And so then I kind of, I was like, I kind of like you That's guys now. It was awesome. like really joyful. Aww. But he told me that story and I was like, Jason sees that and he's like, they're dancing. I'm like, they're probably like fighting to the death. <laughs> like, <laughs> that sounds like a single or piece of like art. poisoned and like seizuring upright. Like I think of it so darkly and Jason's like, they're dancing. <laughs> like, well, they had so tap sick. shoes on. No, I, <laughs> I have a, I'm inspired by your point of view and I, I'm trying to adopt that dancing rat point of view i love that <laughs> well i want to talk about window as well because i feel like that's a song right that you guys have had many years on so it's like your history song in a way because you have all these uh different timelines that have come into the song but the song is almost like the anthem of hope hmm. and i'm just curious in the album to me at least no you're um, right and i'm just curious what are you hopeful for in that song and for the future it's a big question yeah Wow, so many images splashed in my mind. Uh, just sort of like letting go of, I mean, I'm going to sound like a horoscope app right now, but like letting go of things that don't serve me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> letting go of things that don't serve me uh, and don't serve the world. It's like I, yeah, like I want to be of service to the world and my community in whatever way that looks r for me and like, uh, again, I can't do that unless I'm in the right shape and um, like mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, so to speak. And yeah, Window was sort of like, all right, I'm tired of these things. Let them go. Ripping myself out of past patterns, scenarios, people, and then placing myself in this like hopefully new um, which doesn't, you know, when like, people like leave people, it's like you don't have to like leave them or cut them off. It's just like, your relationship with them can change or your perspective on how you treat the relationship um, can change the relationship without having to like, yeah. So I don't know if that made sense, but yeah, it is definitely yeah. a big song. That's a big emotion, emo song. And it definitely tied, I think also an era of dead stuff together. And is a, now there's like a new era coming, even though most people probably won't be able to pick up on that. For me personally, it is. Yeah. yeah can show them that way do you have an answer to that as well jason mm, i'm mostly just looking forward to like cultivating happiness <laughs> it's perfect <Yeah. laughs> dancing rats uh, i almost want you to start telling horoscopes like for dead which maybe could be part of this next damn wow. question. money <laughs> idea producer credit. Like, yeah, producer credit is all i want yeah <laughs> finders fee for that idea well hotline so you've got this hotline because mm -hmm. that actually kind of that could feed into it in some way but yeah oh my god we, we You're make one every now. day <laughs> <laughs> i can't take amy's spot no amy's mm -hmm. a god <laughs> <laughs> um, but the hotline I love, like, I know you guys have had that for a few years, but the mm -hmm. recent ask is ba about bad love. And I've listened to some of those stories that are fantastic, but I'm curious, what are some of your favorites that have come in? <laughs> well, I have one about the fish. What's that one? Okay. I actually haven't listened to it in like eight months, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of voicemails <laughs> on there yeah. and they come to this certain email, but, um, there's one about fish, like this girl and guy like were dating and long story short they broke up and the guy had some mental health situation and um one of the things he chose to do was put fish into her favorite pillow like dead fish no. and then sew it like they were fresh when he put them in there <laughs> and then sew it sewed it back so they were like in there in a way that she wouldn't know and she in the voicemail she just kept talking about how it was her favorite pillow and she was always cuddling with it and like I don't know. It was like her life. And then the fish started rotting. I was just like, what an intense breakup thing to do. But then he, she, he like didn't remember doing it. And then when she called him out on it, he was like, oh yeah, the fish were missing one day. And I was wondering where they went. It was like Whoa. this like creepy. I was just Whoa. like, that's also maybe why I stopped listening. Cause some of them were like too intense for me. I was like, I can't listen to anyone. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite? I don't think I could talk about the one that I, I thought was really funny on the radio. Oh, well. <laughs> is it mean, embarrassing? Well, I think it was like the, the they had a really nice date and then 
she like peed on him. Oh, oh yeah, I, I heard that one. Yeah, yeah. That's I made fine. a TikTok about that one. Yeah, yeah. Like he woke up in the middle of the night and they were. But that's like an yeah. alcoholic thing. Like when I used to drink oh. a lot, I would do stuff like that. I mm. thought it was like a golden shower thing. No, <laughs> I made it. What I thought too. I yeah. made it like the golden shower. I mean, it could be interpreted in many ways. Yeah. There's no shame in like you know when you're drunk and you piss in your sleep. It's like okay, you probably should look stop drinking. Try to pull that back a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. I definitely caught some I'm sleepwalker from streams yeah. in yeah. my day. But yeah. then yeah, if it's a piss play situation, then that guy needs to. You gotta have a conversation. Yeah, you gotta get consent before you fall asleep. Yeah, yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe that's yeah private. Well, so this since you've had this online for a while, like you know, what's next for it? You think misconnections at dead shows, horoscopes, <sighs> or like you know, horoscopes know. could be cool. Maybe we could start our own uh, food delivery service. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll retire it. Yeah, maybe we'll take submissions for the new album. Oh my the goodness! Album title. They could just write songs for us and send it to us. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> no rights. Send in songs. <laughs> well, is that like a we Silver get Jesus canceled. record that was like all recorded on people's voicemails? People will get mad. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Something oh my like goodness. That. Well, I have a few more questions, kind yeah. of some fun questions before I let you guys go. Now, I know you have been opening up about the dead process and production and talking about tips and tricks and tones. And so I'm curious if there's one of your favorite tips, tricks, or tones that you want to share about the dead writing process? Mm. I mean, this is not even, I guess, specific to dead, but, like, you just have to, like, get it right before, like, get it right when you're doing it. Like, nothing can be fixed, really, to, like, satisfaction. Yeah. So just, like, play it with some heart and play it right. Just be perfect, okay? (laughs) Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect. No, no. But just, like, you know... (laughs) You have to reach for perfection knowing you're never going to get it. You can't settle like with like if you're like, oh, we'll just fix it later. Like don't right. have that attitude. Be yeah. like, I'm like, I can listen to this. Actually, I heard a really good quote from Aldous Harding where she was like, any little thing, like if she if it sticks out to her twice, then it like is removed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good one. Like if, if, you, if it catches your ear twice and then you're like oh, like, that's kind of might bother me. Yeah, don't be it's lazy. It's going to bother you for the rest of your life. And it's like permanent. So I might as well do it right. Yeah. Yeah. Like Like we recently just did a cover and we did it horribly. And instead of redoing it, we were like, oh, it's fine. Well, I was also, well, I think, I don't know if it's We were in bad shape. No, it's bad. I was throwing up and laying on the ground and then I just stood up to play the song and then I had to lay back down. In my mind, I'm like, this is a lesson what you just described. Like, we should have been like, oh, let's do it one more time just in case. And we didn't. And I'm like never gonna do that again <laughs> you gotta make the mistake, but it's like though. yeah it's mm-hmm. fine to make the mistake and i love making mistakes loudly and in public because then you have nothing to lose or hide you're like free so i think that's perfect yeah yeah <laughs> well emily i know on top of being a musician you're also a tattoo artist yep and sometimes so i'm curious if you have seen any dead tattoos yet mm. yeah some people have sent us like they got the horse when we did the little horse one um I think somebody's gotten the masks. I've never seen one. I feel like I saw it recently. Look, the, show us your dead tattoos. In the blur of life. <laughs> wow. yeah, yeah, everyone send the dead tattoos to Jason on Instagram because I retired from social media. I think that's fair. I know I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there anything else you guys would like our listeners to know before I let you go? Mm. Come to the show. See you at hard times so, afterwards. Yeah. Uh, nice. Or modern times. Yeah, one of the times. Hard times at night, modern times in the morn. Perfect. For those who know, you know. Well, thank you guys so much for for being with us here at The Current. Again, dead here at The Current Studio. Blue Skies is out now, and enjoy the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs)